How's it going everybody? I'm so glad that you've joined us this Tuesday morning unless you're watching this during the night or unless you're watching this another day you broke the rules. Just just kidding. Uh, we're so glad that you've joined us. So we decided to call this Theology Tuesday because we're going to post this every Tuesday and we want to learn more about God through the lens of his scriptures. Uh, so again, as I always say every week, this is not a replacement of your own personal communion with God. This is just a supplement to encourage you, to challenge you, to start digging, uh, digging deeper into God's Word every single day so that you would grow in your affection to Jesus uh, and start developing spiritual disciplines in your own personal life. So again, if you have your Bibles around, I'm going to give you a few seconds to find it. And, and I want you to meet me in Psalm 42. Um, we've been looking through the Psalms for the past few weeks, and it's been so refreshing for my soul just to look at these beautiful words that mostly have been written by a guy named David. And many, many years ago, thousands of years ago, and it's so refreshing to see the truth about God in this book called Psalm, which if you don't know where it is, if you open in the middle of the Bible, I just found Ecclesiastes, you went too far, just back up a little bit, and then you're gonna go to the middle of the Bible and you're gonna find Psalm, the book of Psalms, and then you're gonna find Psalm 42, chapter 42, the big numbers, the chapter, the small numbers of the verses. So we're gonna read together, we're gonna talk about it together, and then we're gonna pray together. Um, and so again, grab your coffee, grab your Bible, and let's look at God's Word together. So go to Psalm 42, uh, and this is what God's Word says. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I poured out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One, with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of the Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs His love. At night His song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? In verse 11, why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, or I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. One of the reasons I chose this psalm is because a few days ago, I was listening to this really old song called As the Deer. And in the very first verse, this is what this song says. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longs for it after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. And I, I, couldn't, um, I, just, I couldn't stop uh, just singing this song because it's so refreshing. And, and it went back to Psalm 42, a song that was written most likely by a name called David. Now, if you've just read a little bit of the psalm, you're going to find something about David, that this guy was a seeming schizophrenic guy. One verse was like, Lord, I love you, I trust you. And the next verse, he's like, why have you uh, abandoned me, oh God? And so we see this different contrast that David writes about, and we can feel so related to him because there are days that we want to praise the Lord, and there are other days that we just want to abandon the Lord because we have felt that He has abandoned us. Um, so I want to draw two main applications about God here, and then we're going to talk and pray together. Um, so number one is that only God can satisfy. Only God can satisfy. Uh, last summer, I went uh, for a run during the summer with my buddy Matt. And Matt is really athletic. He can run a lot. He has great endurance. And then there's me. I am not that athletic and I don't have that much endurance. So we started running and running and he ran pretty fast. And so I was staying a little bit behind. 
And after a while, I had to stop and I, I kept stopping and I kept stopping. Madam was actually really patient with me and, and, and wait with, for me. Uh, but after a while, when we stopped running at the end, I thought I was gonna faint or more than that, I thought I was gonna die because it was so hot. It was like 92 degrees outside and with the with the with how humid it was, you felt like it was 110. So it was so hot. And then at the end, when we stopped running, I went into my car and I just couldn't, I couldn't breathe. And I thought I was gonna die because it was so hot. And, and so I grabbed my bottle of water that I had left in my car, which by this point, it, it tasted like tea because it was so hot. So I drank that. And man, I was so thirsty and that drink of water just quenched my thirst and my longing for water while I was running. And I remember two things that day, uh, or I learned two things. One, never go on a run with Matt. And number two is that we are longing for some, something in life. And we believe if you're a follower of Jesus, that only God can satisfy the longings of your heart longing of your soul not a girlfriend not a boyfriend not a not a spouse not a relationship not anything else can satisfy apart from jesus and that is clear through our scripture the more you're trying to find things outside of jesus the more miserable the more depressed the more anxious you're going to find yourself and so god can only satisfy god is inviting you to come to him to come to the source of living water he's the only one that can provide that satisfaction for you so the question for you is what are you longing for what are you longing for number two only god can bring hope david is literally having this mental breakdown and he's like why are you downcast on my soul and he's literally talking to himself and he's telling himself like why are you downcast why are you depressed why am i so anxious why am i struggling with this and, and i believe there are two ways here that where we can put our hope and and number one is by talking to ourselves now a lot of times when we talk to ourselves we get this kind of hope but I believe that that hope is temporary. It's not gonna last. It's maybe gonna last for a few days, maybe a few weeks, but no more than that. But there's a second way that I wanna encourage you to, to do it, to apply in your life. And number two is preach to yourself. Instead of talking to yourself, preach to yourself. You might be like, Johnny, but not, I'm not a preacher. I don't know how to preach. If you have God's word and you have received and, and if you have immersed yourself into the truth of scripture, into the truth of God's word, then you can preach those same words to you. Not what you believe about certain things, not what you heard about certain things, but what does scripture say about God and his character? Preaching to yourself. When you preach to yourself, you remind yourself who God is. And you start looking at how faithful and how gracious, how he, compassionate he is. And so you remind yourself of who God is by preaching to yourself from in the from. Uh, from scripture from looking at scripture so scripture is where you'll find god self-disclosing himself to you god has revealed himself to you through scripture not if you go to social media not if you go to friends not even if you go to church which those are good things but ultimately you're gonna know who god is through his word through scripture now there's nothing wrong with pouring out your soul to God. Now, David is literally doing that through most of the psalm. He's literally saying, why are you downcast on my soul? Put your hope in God. So he's talking to himself, but later he's preaching to himself and saying, you know, this is who God is. God is a gracious God. God is a faithful God. And he's reminding himself of the character of God. He's reminding himself of the character of God. I remind I was remembering of what Job said. If you know a little bit about Job in the Bible, he's this guy who was blameless before the Lord and then God allowed Satan to touch his uh, life and to touch his household and then he lost everything. And then his friends come and, and he's like, you know, you've sinned, Job, like what's wrong with you? And there's a point throughout the book of Job, I encourage you to read it, where he's saying, though you slay me, he's telling God, though you've <laughs> just put these... Um, have, though you've done all these things with me lord i will praise you though you slay me i will put my hope in you and that's a beautiful passage because i'm certain that a great percentage of the people who are watching this have felt like the lord has slayed them you feel like the lord has disappointed you 
maybe you feel like the Lord has failed you in some way, but He hasn't. And this is what I want to remind you, to preach to yourself and to put your hope in Jesus, to put your hope in God, because He will never disappoint you. He will never break your heart. And so that's the beauty of what David is writing here. He's with a broken heart. He's having a mental breakdown, but at the same time, he's reminding himself who, who God is. And he's telling himself, put your hope in God. Put your hope in God. So I want to pray. I want to pray this psalm uh, over us. And, and I, wanna, I want you to, to be encouraged of this. I want you to start getting immersed into God's word so that you will learn how to preach to yourself on a daily basis. I always like to say this so that you will preach the truth and shame the devil, right? That every day you will wake up and get immersed into God's word and you're ready to punch the devil in the face every single day because you know who God is. So let me pray and then we'll wrap this up. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for your truth. Thank you because we can put our hope in you, Lord. I know that there's so many things in life where we can put our our hope, maybe in a, in a girl, in a guy, in a job, in a college degree, in a friend, Lord, but help us to realize that only our hope is going to be firm in you, Jesus, not in this world. We love you, Lord, and help us to pour our heart and our souls to you every single day. I know that we need that. We need to be honest and vulnerable to you because you know our hearts. And once again, Lord, I pray that we can put our hope in you. And we pray all these things in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Hey, I hope to see you here next week. We, we encourage you to start getting immersed into God's Word on a daily basis, to start growing in your devotion to Jesus. Uh, we're so grateful for you and hope to see you soon. Bye.